One more time, welcome to our service this morning. My name is Pastor Michael Gucci. I'm so glad you're able to join us as we celebrate the Lord this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody open your mouth. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. I'm chasing after you. No matter
after you this morning, oh God. Because we know, Lord, victory belongs to our God. So we declare you are worthy to receive all the honor. You are worthy to receive all the praise, God. Father, we honor you. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Come on, raise your voice and just bless the name of Jesus this morning. For he's worthy to be praised. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. In the beauty of your holiness, Father, we give you all the praise, God. Jesus, receive all the honor and praise. Receive all the honor and praise. Receive all the honor and praise, God. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, come on, raise your voice, raise your voice, raise your voice, raise your voice. Bless the name of Jesus. 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 When the darkness falls, it will prevail. Cause I know the God I serve is only trial. My God will never fail. And my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. That's it. Every war he wages, he will win. We bless your name, God. I'm not backing down from any giant.
and mighty God great and mighty God you take what the enemy turned for evil you turned it for good some may trust in chariots others may trust in horses but we choose to trust in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower by which we can run to we have no other weapon which we can fight this warfare some may use the artillery but we only know one name the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. So this is the only way we know how to fight our battles. Come on, I ask you to fight now in the name of Jesus. Fight for your family. Fight for your life now in the name of Jesus. Shut up and say, Kaya Nerebo. Shalalelebo, Kaya Nerebo. Hey! This is how I fight my battles. <laughs> This is how I fight my battles. Come on, we can declare that this morning. This is how I fight my battles. With our hands lifted up to Him, we declare. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, declare. This is how I fight my battles. Fight this time. This is how I fight my battles. Hey. This is our fight, my battle. This is our fight, my battle. It may look, it may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look that I'm surrounded, God. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Raise your voice. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Even look sing. Even look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Even look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how. This is how I fight my battles. As we declare this song, my battles. This morning, this is how I fight my battles. I'm reminded of a movie I watched when I was a young boy. It's called The Lion King. And on this movie. That little cub, I think it's called Simba or something. He met some, some hyenas and they surrounded him. And he tried to roar and they were laughing at him. Little did they know that the lion, that the lion, that the cub's father was right at the back. And so he kept on trying to roar and the, and, and, and the hyenas kept on laughing at him. But finally, he went to roar and the lion roared behind him. And when the hyenas heard the voice of the lion, they took off. I'm here to let you know from January, February, March, April, May, until June, the enemy has looked like he has surrounded you. You have tried everything, but it looks like he has surrounded you. Let me declare today that the lion of the tribe of Judah, our God is about to roar. So today I tell you, great warfare, as you understand that there is victory, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. I don't know any other way. This is how I fight. Declare. This is how I fight my battles. This is 
I'm on the winning side, the winning side. Victory is ours this morning. Victory is yours this morning. So now we declare every hill sickness, every sickness. Now we speak to you. We command you to be healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible declares that by his stripes we were healed. So I declare now sugar diabetes, arthritis. I declare even if COVID is, is bothering you now, may the Lord heal you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare now over every family Amen. where the enemy has tormented you. Tonight there is victory for you. What the enemy tried to turn for evil, God turned it for good. So I declare victory, victory over higher heights, victory over your family, victory over everything you do. There is victory, 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 victory. There is victory in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, God, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Pastor Pauline Joroge from Higher Heights Church and welcome to Church Online. Can I just start by saying thank you to the praise and worship team, especially a big, big, big thank you to Pastor Mike, who was our guest minister today. God richly bless you for being such a great supporter, great encourager, and great member in diaspora of Higher Heights Church. What a great work you're doing. And I believe that you've all been blessed by that session. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you if this is your first time here on this platform, welcome. If it is your second time, third time, welcome again and again. And to you, the Higher Heights family, we love you. Thank you, thank you for connecting this way. Like the Queen told us, we shall meet again. And so it is a very important time right now. We are going to get into the Word of God and we have a guest minister. So help me to welcome none other than Pastor Reverend Oscar Amisi, a great friend of this ministry, a great man of God. Come on, let's welcome Pastor Oscar Amisi. God bless you. Opportunity to minister and to speak uh, to the congregation at uh, Higher Heights and, and the many who are listening to us and watching, watching us across the world. I want to thank God for the partnership and the friendship that we have. And I'm so excited at what God is doing in your lives, Pastor Peter and Pastor Pauline, and the things that you're doing to build the kingdom. I am so convinced that the greater and, the, and, and good days and best days for High Heights Church are ahead of you. May God keep on blessing you, keep on pushing that work and see God uh, do marvelous things in your midst. I invite you to join me as we read from Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10 to verse 17. And the title of my message is simple. With every sunset, there is a sunrise. I want to encourage you and lift up your spirits because I know that's what God wants to do in this season. With every sunset, there is a sunrise. Join me as we read from Genesis chapter 28. Let's read Genesis 28, verse 10 to 17. But before we read Genesis 28, I just want to give you a short background story to our scripture today and to our preaching today. Isaac is the only son of Abraham and Sarah. They got him in their old age. Isaac married Rebekah, and together they got twins, Esau, who came first, and Jacob, who came second, clutching to Esau's heel. They have grown up, and they've had lots of drama. At one time, Jacob gives Esau a plate of lentils in exchange for his birthright. As they age, their father Isaac is now very old and has become blind. And as the Jewish custom demands, he must bless the firstborn son before he dies. The firstborn son was given all the family blessing and the rest were to serve him. So he summons Esau and tells him, go get, make me a nice meal from game meat so that I may bless you. And as soon as Esau 
leaves the father's presence, the mother who overheard the conversation calls Jacob and they conspire to deceive their father Isaac so that they can give Jacob the firstborn blessing, though it was reserved for Esau. They rob Esau of his blessing. Esau comes back and finds out that what, had, what has happened, and he's so desperate for any blessing that the father has left. He knows he has lost something very, very important to his younger brother. He then hatches a plan to kill Jacob after his father has died and the mourning period has ended. And interestingly, the mother gets to hear of that plan and he summons Jacob. And they convince their father to send Jacob to his uncles in the pretext that she wouldn't want Jacob to marry one of the women of the land just like Esau had done. Jacob is now on the run. He's a fugitive running away from Esau who is planning to kill him. He's making the long journey from Beersheba to Haran, which is approximately 500 miles. It's a long, tiring journey, a journey that would keep him away from his family for almost 20 years. Tired and exhausted, he gets to a certain place, a, a, a certain place in the journey and he decides to take a rest. The sun had set, so he decided to take a nap at that place. Let's now read from Genesis 28, verse 10 to 17. Now that I've given you a short background story to what we are about to preach today. The Bible says in verse 10, then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. Mark the words the sun had set, and he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head, and lay down in that place. He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were, descend, were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will, be, will also be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from, this, from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place? Mark that word. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I want to bring to you a message today that I've entitled, After Every Sunset, There Is a Sunrise. After Every Sunset, There Is a sunrise. I want us to look at the few things that characterized the journey of Jacob from Beersheba to Haran. The first thing that we see in scripture, the Bible says, and the sun set down on him. Number one, Jacob was in a dark place. Nothing was looking up. It meant nothing around him was promising. The guy was literally groping in darkness. You see, symbolically, it talks about darkness uh, at that time being night, but not only was it dark, but the sun had literally set on him. Things had taken a bad turn for Jacob. It seemed there was no light at the end of the tunnel. He was in trouble. The sun had set down. Like I said, the guy was groping in darkness. He didn't know what awaited him in his journey to Haran. The sun had literally set on him. You see, the sun sets on you when you wake up one morning, having loved your job, working so well, and your job being so promising, and you're told you've been retrenched, you've lost your job. The sun has set down on you. The sun sets down on you when a business that you've built for a long time, working it out, making sure that it grows, COVID hits, and all of a sudden, you lose that business. The sun has set down on you. See, the sun has set down on you when you've been living a healthy life all along and within no time you start getting challenges and you're fighting for your health. My friend, the sun has set on you. The sun has set on you when either because of COVID or because of other reasons you're finding your, yourself in a space whereby you're mourning the life or the death of a loved one. The sun has set 
on you. The sun has set on you. When you look at yourself, you always used to make ends meet. And you're looking at yourself at this time and you're wondering, how will I make ends meet? The sun has set on you. The sun has set on you when all you used to hold on to, what was your hope? And you see it in your very eyes, starting to crumble down. The sun has set on you. The sun had literally set on Jacob. He was on his way to, Har to Haran, and he had nothing. He was in a dark place. Things were not looking up for him. Things were not promising. Not only had the sun set on him, the Bible says in that space where it was now dark, he took one of the stones at the place and put it under his head. He made one of, his stone, one of the stones his pillow. The guy now was not just in a dark place, but he was in a hard place. He was sleeping on a stone. Not only was he in a dark place, he was in a hard place. Remember, he left Beersheba. All, all he had was a staff. The guy had nothing. He had a piece of food in his hand, a worthless piece of food that could not even do anything. Things were hard. Things were literally hard. That's why this man who had been blessed is now sleeping on a rock. The guy literally had nothing. He had no money. That's why he couldn't afford a hotel. He had nothing going for him. You know, you could be like Jacob and you're saying, you know what? I'm not just in a hard place. I'm, all, I'm not just in a dark place. I am in a dark place, in a hard place. I don't have money. I've lost my job. My business has gone down. I don't even know how I'll foot my bills. My friend, you're in a hard place just like Jacob. Jacob was in a dark place and now he finds himself also in a hard place. Things were not good. Things were so tight on him. This man sleeping on a stone. And then the Bible says, the story starts to take a different kind of trajectory because the Bible says in that dark place, sleeping on a hard rock, the guy had a dream. In a dark place. I mean, the story starts to take a turn, you know? It starts to take a different trajectory. Meaning that even in a dark place and in a hard place, you can dream. Jacob dreamt in a dark place and in a hard place. In fact, what will keep you moving and going when you find yourself in difficulty are the dreams that you have because dreams fuel hope. It is that dream that Jacob had in that place that kept him going. That dream that he had, not only in that dark place, but in a hard place that kept him going. It is very easy, hear me, my friends, for you to give up on your dreams, especially when you find yourself in a difficult place. The Bible says, and Jacob dreamt. Friends, I want to encourage you, even in a tough season, hold on to your dream. Hold on to it. That dream will fuel hope inside of you. That dream will keep on, will keep you going. God gives Jacob a dream. God gives him a divine dream. And the reason why God gives Jacob a divine dream is so that he may change his perspective. Remember the guy was a fugitive. The guy was running away from Esau. He's now in a dark place. He's now lying on a hard place. Things look terrible. And God gives him a dream. And the reason he does that is so that he can change his perspective. And when you change your perspective, you start looking at the circumstances that are around you differently. You see, throughout the Bible, anytime God wanted to shift people from where they are to where he wanted them to be, he would either give them a dream or give them a vision, a divine dream or a divine vision. And the reason why he would do that, like I said earlier, is so that you and I may change our perspective. Visions and dreams are all about perspective. That's what visions and dreams are all about, perspective. Being able to see things totally differently. What is perspective? Perspective, listen to this, is a way of regarding something. It is a point of view or a way of looking at things. Let me say that again. A perspective is a way of regarding something it is a point of view or it's a way of looking at things. It's being able to see stuff differently. So a heavenly vision or a divine dream is God giving you an invitation into his presence for you to be able to have a glimpse at how he sees things. Let me say that again. 
a heavenly vision or a divine dream is God giving you and me an invitation for you to be able to have a glimpse at how he sees things, the way he sees things differently. You see, God may not necessarily change our circumstances, though sometimes he does, but he gives us a vision while we are still in that same place so that we may see things a little bit differently. Can I say that again? God may not necessarily change our present circumstances, though sometimes he does, but he gives us a vision or a dream so that we may start seeing where we are and see our circumstances in a totally, totally different way. Jacob needed a change of perspective. Jacob needed that change of perspective for him to be able to rise above his circumstances. And you, we see this pattern repeated in several places in the Bible. For example, John the Revelator in the island of Patmos, Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, the guy is chained, bruised, beaten, injured, and left for dead by his captors, those who didn't like Christ. And the guy is bleeding. They knew this guy is going to die in this lonely island. You, you'd think when he prayed, God would send angels to go and rescue him and get him out of that space. Send all his angels and say, go get this guy out of that island. You'd think God will do that, but look at what God does. God tells him, look up. He says, look up. I want you to see things the way I see them. I want you to see your problems totally different. I want you to see your problems from where I am so that you may start looking at them totally differently. What about Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 15? Abraham is childless. The wife is barren. The guy is worried. Who will inherit me? Who will perpetuate my heritage? And Abraham cries to God. He's barren. The wife is barren. He has no child. He's so worried. The guy is confused, discouraged, pressurized by society and the wife. And instead of God give him up, giving him a baby when he prayed, God gets him out and says, you come out here. And he tells him, look up to the stars. Look up to the sky, count the stars. Can you imagine? I mean, God, when, when, when in the midst of challenges, God says, you come. I want you to start seeing the way I see them. He wants to change your perspective. Some of us, you're listening to me today, you may be in a really tough situation. And you're wondering, how can things look up when I'm in this place where I am, when I'm in my current circumstances? I want you to understand that God may not necessarily change your circumstances, but he wants to give you a vision or a dream that will change your perspective. Hear me, child of God. God may not necessarily change your present circumstances, so sometimes he does, but he wants to, uh, uh, he wants to bring us to a place where he can give us a vision and a dream so that we may be able to see things totally differently so that we can be able to change our perspective. You see, a story is told about three bricklayers, and this guy uh, can, stumbles upon them as they are, you know, uh, came upon them as they are working on the bricks, and he asked the first man, what are you doing? And the man looks at him and he says, I am laying bricks. And then he gets the second one, meets the second one still working, and he asks him, what are you doing? And the man looks at him and he says, I am building a wall. Then he gets the third one and asks, hey, gentleman, what are you doing? Ah, laying those bricks. And the guy looks at him and he says, I am building a cathedral. It's all about perspective. Seeing what others are not seeing. What are you seeing around you? See, there's a story of a young girl who was in their living room and she was drawing a picture and she was so, all her attention was on that picture. And the mother who was cooking in the kitchen comes by the, the living room and sees her drawing and gets to her and says, hey, honey, what are you doing? And the girl says, you know, without even paying attention, she says, I am drawing the picture of God. And the, and the mother, you know, answers back, don't be foolish. No one has ever seen God. And she continues to draw. The mother comes back the second time and the girl is so busy on that picture, drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. The third time the mother comes and, uh, you know, taps and says, honey, I told you, don't be stupid. Nobody has ever seen God. And the story goes, the girl dropped the pen on the paper, lifted up her head, looked at the mother and said, mom, when I am done, they will all know how he looks like. It is all about perspective. What are you seeing wherever you are? Are you seeing a glass that is half empty? Or are you seeing a glass that is half full? 
God would want to give you a vision in the very space that you are in and a dream so that he may help you change your perspective. You see, when he gives you a vision and a dream and you change your perspective, you start looking at things the way God sees them. And you start agreeing with God. It becomes even harder when you see things with a narrow perspective. Because when you see things with a narrow perspective, you are not able to see things over and above the circumstances that you're in. God would want to lift you up, change your perspective, give you a divine dream, give you a divine visitation so that you may start to see things totally differently. You see, God knew that the road ahead of Jacob was difficult. And he knew if I don't change this guy's perspective, he will not be able to stand the challenges that you may face. Can you imagine meeting Laban and having to meet Esau on the way? These things would have challenged him. These things would have crushed him. And God says, ah, let me give this man a dream so that I can change his perspective. You think of David in Psalm 23. The Bible talks, uh, talks about him in the valley of the shadow of death. You see, David chose to change his perspective. And when he was in the valley of the shadow of death, he saw God walking. This is what that scripture says. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He saw God being active in that valley. He sets a table before me in the midst of my enemy. God is working even in that valley. God is working. God is doing stuff behind the scene. You see, in the story of Jacob, the Bible says he saw a ladder. And we saw that ladder. He says, this is a God thing. What did he see? He saw God active even when his head was in, on the rock. Can you imagine? He saw God active when he was in a dark place and his head was on the rock. God is working. God is working behind the scenes. My friend, you may be in a tough moment. You may be confused about what is going around you. I want you to understand. God is working, and God is working behind the scenes. The situation may be hard. The situation may be difficult. The devil may seem like he's winning. He may act like he's got you. He may act like he's winning over you. But I want you to understand, God is at work. God is at work in every situation. You see, Jacob saw angels ascending and descending, ascending and descending. He saw activity. He saw God working in that very dark and difficult place. I am convinced that the ascending and the descending of angels could have been the angels coming down, taking the prayers and the petition of the saints, ascending up to heaven, and then descending again with the answers to those prayers. My friend, God is working. God is working. And God tells him, you know what, Jacob? I will not leave you until I see what I have promised you has come to pass. You know what I'm convinced? I am convinced that even in the situation you find yourself in, God will not leave you until he ensures that that which he has promised you has come to pass. Listen to me, my friend. With every sunset, there is a sunrise. With every sunset, there is a sunrise. And, and then in that dark place, on that hard rock, when he sees the angels ascending and descending, you know, in that dark place, in the hard place, he dreams. He sees the angels ascending and descending. The Bible then says, when he was able to change his perspective, when he started seeing things totally differently, the Bible says he calls the place awesome. He called the place awesome. This is what he says. He says, God is here, and I did not know it. God is here. And I didn't know it. I didn't perceive it. God is in this dark place. God is in this hard place. And I did not know it. Listen to me, friends. Do you know it's very easy when you and I find ourselves in a dark and a hard place. We think that God has left us. God is absent. But listen to Jacob. He says, God is here. Where was God? In the dark place and in the hard place. And then he says, and I did not know it. Sometimes it becomes difficult for you to understand that in that challenging situation you are in, God is together with you. Sometimes we feel that God has left us, especially in the darkest of moments. What we don't realize is that those are the moments when God carries us because we're not able to even walk by ourselves. God is lifting us up. 
And Jacob says, I didn't know it. God is here. And I didn't know it. The moments that when things are difficult, that's when God carries us on his wings when we are not able to carry ourselves. He says, in other versions, he says, and I did not sense it. God is here, and I did not sense it. Because everything around me says, there's no God. There's nowhere God can be here. Why? Because I'm in a dark place, and I'm laying my head on a hard rock. Dark place and on a hard rock. When things are tough, when things are difficult, we may never know that God is together with us because we rely too much on our senses. But you see, those are moments when God would want us to trust his commitment to us. That when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, we've got to get hold of that word and trust his commitment to his word. That even when we feel like he's lost our address, he hasn't left, he hasn't departed. He's so present. And we must not rely on our senses. We must rely and trust his commitment on his word. It's, it's when he realized that God was there. He had changed his perspective. He had gotten a revelation from heaven uh, through that divine dream. When he realized that God was there in that place, he called that place awesome. Can you imagine? What place did he call awesome? The dark place and the hard place. He looks at it. And it looks at it totally different from now henceforth and he calls it the place. Awesome. Nothing had physically changed. He was still in a dark place. Nothing. Still in a dark place and still on a hard rock. But the revelation of the presence of God not only changed his perspective, but it also changed his confession. The revelation of the presence of God did not just change his perspective, but it also changed his confession. And he called that place an awesome place. The place that was hard, the place that was dark, he calls that place awesome. I'm still in a dark place and on a rock, but I have a revelation from God. My confession changes. I want you to see things the way God sees them. Don't rely so much on what you see and what you sense. When you start doing that, you know that space that you're finding yourself, you'll change the name of that place. You'll start confessing totally differently. You'll start speaking life where there's no life. He calls the place awesome because he had a revelation. What others call darkness, you start to call awesome because you're part of those who call the things that are not as though they are. You and I can learn from Jacob that you know what? When we change our perspective, change our confession, we start seeing things the way God sees them, then we start speaking life where there was darkness. Can you imagine where there was darkness, the place that was hard? He says, you know, from today henceforth, you are not dark, you're not hard, you are no some place. You're the, in fact, he called that place the house of God. God is here. That's what he said. God is here. He changed his perspective and he changed his confession. I'm about to bring this down, my friend. But I, I want to challenge you. Start looking at your circumstances totally differently. Look at them the way God sees them. God looks at an impossible thing and he calls it a possibility because of a change of perspective and a change of confession. You call the things that are not as though they are. With every sunset, there is a sunrise. You see, eventually, my friends, the sun would eventually rise on Jacob. In Genesis 32, verse 31, things began to look up for him after his encounter with the angel of God when he limped into Peniel. And he says, I have seen God face to face. I like a better ending. I have seen God face to face. The sun rose on him. I am praying for you today. May the sun rise on you. Where there was darkness, we speak light. Where there was confusion, we speak order. We speak peace. Where there was sickness, we speak healing. Where there was discouragement, we speak encouragement. May the sun rise on you. You may be in a dark place. You may be in a hard place. 
But I pray, may God give you a divine revelation. May God give you a divine dream that will change your perspective and will change your confession. And as you do that, may you experience the sun rising on you as a believer, wherever you are and wherever you're listening to me. May the sun rise on you. May you experience the scripture in Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, that that which the locusts have stolen, anything that the enemy has stolen in this season, may there be a restoration. May there be a restoration. That which the locusts have stolen, that which the cankerworms have eaten, may there be a restoration. May you experience a restoration and demonstration of God's power in your life. May you see him work as you change your perspective, as you change your confession, as you rise above your current circumstances, because that's what perspective does. You start to rise above your current circumstance and environment, and you start speaking to it, because you're not one of those who complains and murmurs. You're one of those who speaks into situation. May you start doing that, and as you do that, may the sun rise on you. Hear me, friends, I came to encourage you that with every sunset, there is a sunrise. Just like Jacob experienced that sunrise, may you experience a sunrise in your life to the glory and honor of his mighty name. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for all those who've listened to me today. As you've learned from the story of Jacob, some of them may be in a dark place. Some of them may be in a hard place. I pray that, Lord, may you intervene in their situation. Give them a divine dream. Give them a divine vision that will change their perspective completely. And they will start to see things the way you see them. I commit them to you and I speak your blessings upon them and I turn around in their situation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. What a word. What can we say, Reverend Oscar Amisi? We are grateful man of God. Great insight, great revelation. And I believe that that word is going to benefit you. I always say, whatever word you don't put into application will never benefit you. And I know that you're good students of the word. Let that word benefit you. But I especially want to talk to you who has heard the word and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. For this word to work, to work for you, you need to be in the right relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome you and to invite you into the family of God. And if you're going to pray with me and you want to surrender today to the Lord, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my life. I repent and confess of all my sins. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am now a child of God. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome into the family of God. God bless you. Please find a church near you and plug in and become a member there. Let them know that you've given your life to Christ, that they may be able to walk with you to help you to grow in your walk of faith. If you're in Berkshire, if you're in Slough and you've prayed that prayer or in the environs of around Slough, Welcome to Higher Heights Church. And the Lord bless you so much as you continue and you walk in this walk of faith. God bless you. Giving time is blessing time. Worshiping the Lord with our tithes and offering is a command in the Bible. And this is the time we want to give you this opportunity that you may give back to the Lord what he has given you. So there is some details right now running on the screen. We pray that you'll find it in your heart to give cheerfully and to give abundantly. May the Lord bless you as you put that soil into good ground. Higher Heights Church is a good ground. And indeed, the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for every viewer, for every man, every woman, every young person, every child under the sound of my voice. Lord, this morning, I bless them with the blessing of the Father. I pray that God, you may keep them and watch over them, shield them and protect them. I pray that God, you may lead them in the name of Jesus. Whatever battle they are fighting, God, we thank you that you are the battle axe. You are the mighty man of war and that, Lord, you have already given them victory 
victory. In the name of Jesus, I take power, I take authority against every demonic force that is attacking you. Right now, I command you, get your filthy hands off the children of God in the name of Jesus. And I command the power of God to work for you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Let there be healing in the sick body right now. In the name of Jesus, the, our God is a healer. May the virtue healing power of God touch every sickness, every ailment. In the name of Jesus. Where lost hope, where there is loss of hope, God, I pray that you encourage your people right now. In the name of Jesus, may their faith be built up in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing right now and what you continue to do. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe and everybody says amen wherever you are. The Lord has had that prayer and the Lord continues to hear your prayer. And the Lord is a God who answers. May the Lord answer you. In Jesus' name, amen. Every Friday, we have a prayer. And this is our desire and our cry that you'll be able to tune in. And this coming Friday, we'll be trialing something new. We'll be meeting on Zoom and also we'll be live streaming that on Facebook. So we look forward to you joining in prayer. Come, let's pull together. Come, let's call upon the name of the Lord. Come, let's pray until something happens. Something has to break loose. Breakthrough is your portion. Breakthrough is for you. Let's join forces together and meet on Friday as we, are, as we pray together. Remember, kids' church, teens' church, Youth ministry happens every Saturday and Sunday, different times for different classes and different age groups. For more information, please feel free to contact us via Facebook or via Instagram or whatever social media handle you can be. And we'll be very happy to send you more information. And as you well all know that here in England, some places of worship have opened up. But for us, our usual location where we meet Burnham Park is not open. And that is why we are not meeting. And to help us to prepare towards our opening, we have sent out a survey to you, Higher Heights Church family. We urge you to fill it out and return it to us. That will help us to even prepare better because we want it not just to be an experience that you will enjoy, an experience that will be a blessing to you, but an experience that you and your family will be safe and feel safe. God bless you as you plan that in Jesus name. Remember, weekly small groups are going in. Connect with a small group, plug in, do life. It is a place of safety. It is a place of care. It is a place where you grow spiritually. Connect with a small group and God will bless you and God will increase you. Marriage Talks with Peter and Pauline continues every Wednesday, 7 p.m., right here on Facebook and YouTube. Higher Heights Church is on different social media platforms. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for Higher Heights Church UK and you will connect with us. We'll be glad to have you and we'll be glad to give you more information. Thank you for tuning in today. May the Lord bless you and keep you in the coming week. Have a great week. We look forward to seeing you on Friday for prayers. God bless you and God keep you.